Can you build a gaming PC for under $1,000 in 2024? Well, of course you can. There are tons of YouTubers who have whole channels just dedicated to it, but I think there's some things that we need to cover and talk about, and we're building a whole new series to do that. So with some creativity and a few pro tips, we think there are some budget bangers that are just waiting to be built by people like you, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about right here, right now on Robitech. Like I said, we are starting a new series of videos and live streams dedicated to removing one of the biggest barriers of entries for PC gaming, and that's the cost or at least the perceived cost. Chances are you've probably looked at a system or two and seen 2,000, 3,000, or that one dude who said that the average price of a PC is over $7,500, and we're just like, nope to that process entirely. Anyway, while it's easy to spend over $2,000 on a high-end system, we wanna show you how to be budget conscious and maximize your dollars spent without ending up with a potato PC. So I met with some other members of the Robitech team and we put our heads together and came up with a series of rules and criteria for these builds. And they are, number one, the builds must be under $1,000 before taxes and shipping. So you've got $1,000, $850, $750. We're gonna go as low as we possibly can without basically getting past rule two and three. So rule number two and three, which go hand in hand. We're only going to be using parts that we've used, tested, and trust to be reliable, which you might be like, Roby, dude, there's so many parts and, and you don't build, oh wait, you do build a lot of PCs. Yes, I do. And on top of that, we're only gonna be buying parts from reputable retailers. We're not gonna be rummaging through the e-waste piles on Facebook Marketplace, refurb bins, or going to Timu or AliExpress for barrel bottom prices here. Again, we've had our bad experiences with them and we wanna make sure that you come out on the other side unscathed. And the links that we share are links that we actually use. Finally, the final rule, we have some non-negotiables. The first thing is we refuse to cheap out on power supplies. Your PSU needs to provide stable, efficient power to the rest of your parts, so we're always going to be making sure that we're putting reputable PSUs in there so you don't have to worry about your PC going poof right in front of your eyes. We're also setting one terabyte of storage and 32 gigs of RAM as a baseline. These are very gaming focused PCs. And again, with games like Call of Duty, et cetera, man, those are, those are getting big. And we wanna make sure you have enough storage to be able to enjoy your PC. And our last non-negotiable is we're not gonna be choosing cases that are going to ruin your PC building experience. They're still inexpensive, don't get me wrong, but they're gonna be fun to build with. Well, we don't wanna give you some of those cases that are cheap, basically slice off your fingers, or just make you wanna quit PC building all in all. Now, the next part of this is not necessarily a rule per se, but it's something we're gonna do with each of these builds. We, we have like a five point weight system to show how each budget build is balanced. The categories are price, or how well we did with the use of our budget, the, the GPU power, the CPU power, parts and features, things like RGB, CPU cooler, RAM speeds, SSD performance, et cetera, and finally aesthetics. And with the last one, I'm gonna be really honest with you. There are some builds that we are going to do that only a mother could love. Like, they've got the personality, but they're not winning any PC beauty contest. Okay. I know that is a lot of exposition up front here, and we have a bit more to come, but with a new series like this, we wanna set the expectations and give you a little behind the scenes look at our mindsets as we go through this. But wait, <laughs> there's more. This video that you're watching right now is actually only one part of the story. There is a whole live stream over at Robitech Live, which for this build has already happened, that you can watch as a step-by-step -step guide. And when we say step-by-step, -step, we mean it. We've got close-up shots, explanations of what we're doing and why, as well as answering questions live while we're building it. I mean, you could literally use the thing to build this exact same PC. We're doing each of these builds on a pretty regular occasion on Friday, and we're going to also be giving them away. So you know what? Make sure that you're like and subscribe to both Robitech and Robitech Live, and make sure that you tune in at 3 p.m. Pacific time on every other Friday for the live show so you can basically potentially walk away with a free budget build, which would be absolutely amazing. All right, so let's talk about episode one, season one, or today's build. We're starting with a baseline. This is like the first gym test of the year. This is gonna give you a starting point that will allow you to adjust your budget and your needs. So with that in mind, the parts that we've chosen for this one represent a configuration that you might find at an entry level or ready to ship rig system from people like iBuyPower or CyberPower, but 
at only $1,000. This one is gonna be balanced in all five categories and we'll explain our thought process along the way. So for the CPU in this case, we're gonna be using the Intel Core i5-13400F with the Gigabyte B760DS3HAX motherboards. Now normally, we would go with like a Z-series motherboard for Intel CPUs, obviously, but because this is a budget build number one, and this is also a 13400F, and that's locked, and there's no overclocking or boosting, kind of negates the need for a Z-board, and so money saved there, and the fact that it's a budget build, we are using a B-series board, which is totally fine for this build and has everything that it essentially needs. Now, if you're wondering why Intel versus AMD, here are a few things. First and foremost, it's gonna have to do with cost. Now, we, we looked at 5,000 and 7,000, so let's talk a little bit about Ryzen 5 7,000 series motherboards. So when it really came down to like motherboard choice, with the Ryzen 5 7600 and 8600G being the closest in price competitive-wise to the 13400F, an equivalent gigabyte motherboard would have been more expensive on the AMD side. Don't worry guys, we'll be featuring Ryzen builds soon, but with the uh, with the rules of trying to make sure that we had all modern parts, this is kind of where the chips landed. Now, we are gonna be using the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Spectrum V3 for CPU cooling, which is great because the case we're using, the Lee & Lee Landcool 205 Mesh, is gonna be feeding the CPU a bunch of air thanks to all of the included intake and exhaust fans. Now for storage, we're gonna use the Kingston NV2 one terabyte NVMe drive, which again, the Robitech team uses a lot of RAM and NVMe drives from Kingston in our desktop laptops. Basically we chose them because it's cheap and it's tested. It's just a good NVMe drive. As for the GPU, we're gonna use the Gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 WinForce OC. We like this card for its slight overclock over reference uh, models. And uh, honestly, the fact that we're actually using it um, with a gigabyte motherboard means that we're not going to have overhead from basically RGB. Now we got to talk about the giant elephant in the room here. Why did we choose RTX 4060 and like a Radeon card? Well, the answer really comes down to the purpose of the build. It's balance. Now our goal was to make this rig as balanced as possible in all of our categories. Now we could have saved money in our budget build by going with a Radeon 7600, but the RTX 4060 offers a feature set that makes this rig capable of playing a wider range of modern games. Let's just look at one example. Black Myth Wukong. All in all, like Black Myth Wukong, you can play with 60 frames per second because of DLSS and its ray tracing capabilities on this without any sacrificing any visual quality, including ray tracing. Not only that, but we wanted to stick with the Gigabyte GPU since we were using a Gigabyte motherboard. This will allow us to use Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software to control the RGB on the GPU case fans and on the air cooler fan, which not only helped us balance aesthetics, but it also minimized the extra software we'd actually need to load onto the system. And you're not basically over encumbering your budget system with a bunch of overhead so to speak. As for RAM, we're gonna be using 32 gigs of Lexar Ares RGB 6400 Mega Transfer CL32 RAM. The RAM kit is actually one of Tom's favorite personal RAMs. Tom is one of our team, team members here. The kit is also RGB equipped, but it does require its own software for RGB control. Now, now, this is one area where we may have spent a little bit more in the aesthetics and the parts and features category. You could drop up to $15 here by using a 6,000 mega transfer kit from Team Group, G-Skill, Kingston, A-Data, and Silicon Power. Some of these kits, like your Team Group, T-Force Delta, your G-Skill Trident series, have RGB and that can be controlled by the motherboard. So there are some options there if you don't wanna deal with your own independent RGB software. And finally, for the PSU, we're gonna be using the Thermaltake Tough Power GF3 750 watt gold ATX 3.0 PSU. Now, while 750 watts does does exceed what these parts need, it does offer plenty of headroom, leaving room for upgrades later. And you don't really save money going lower than 750 watts, let's be honest. So you're probably gonna see these in our builds a lot. Now, when we put this all together, the total cost before taxes and shipping was $965. So we were right on budget. Now, if you wanna build this PC along with us, all of the links for those parts are down in the description below. So you can pause the video, go shopping, bookmark the live stream for that step-by-step -step guide, and watch this video until the end to see how it does with benchmarks, etc. before you get started. We may not do this all the time, but because this build actually ended up being nice looking and is one of the ones that you could like say not only has personality but looks, let's go in and look at some beautiful B-roll.
now that we have it built, let's talk about the performance. We ran an assortment of 10 games to get an approximate idea of how this build would do at 1080p. So let's kick it off. Cyberpunk 2077, we saw an average of just over 90 frames per second. In Black Myth Wukong, we saw 103 frames per second and trailing right at the same, it looks like tied for a race, we saw Forza Horizon 5 also averaging 103 frames per second. In Homeworld 3, we saw an average of over 93 frames per second. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 averaged just under 208. In World of Warcraft, we saw just over 259 frames per second. Apex Legends was over 270. Fortnite was just over 174. League of Legends averaged just over 739 FPS because it'll run a potato and a CSGO also that'll run on a potato. But if you really wanted over a thousand frames per second, well, there you go. Now I know some of you guys are out there thinking, but Roby, with numbers like that, can it do 1440p? And this is one of the reasons that we chose an RTX 4060. And we'll let you be the judge of that, but the frame rates of Cyberpunk 2077 were 66. Black Myth Wukong pulled a 61. Forza Horizon 5 got 83 frames per second. We got 141 frames per second in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 61 frames per second in Homeworld 3, 193 in World of Warcraft, 160 in Apex Legends, 171 in Fortnite, and 477 frames per second in League of Legends, and 748 in CSGO. That's that's almost unplayable in CSGO. I mean, can you even play the game at 748 frames per second? <laughs> so to answer this question, it really all depends on what you're playing. If your main jam is single player cinematic titles, or you need as many frames as you can possibly get to be competitive, 1080p is probably where you want to live. But 1440p is also a viable option here if you're comfortable living close to 60 FPS in some of those more graphically intensive games. There you have the price, the performance, and these are just a few knowledge nuggets that we want to leave with you before we close out. Sorry, to loosely quote GLaDOS from the Portal series, not in the murderous robot way, but more in the nicer way, I guess, the device can absolutely be modified. There are a few ways that you could shave a few dollars off here and there. For example, you could use the Intel stock cooler that comes with the 13400F and save yourself 20 bucks. That trade-off is the stock cooler is pretty loud and it doesn't leave any room for you to swap out for a more powerful CPU. You could even choose a different motherboard or even step back to DDR4. This was a more viable option back in the past, back when DDR5 was significantly outpriced over DDR4, but that does sacrifice the whole rule of just basically staying uh, in with modern day components. And the other thing too is that means that if you are gonna upgrade in the future, you're more than likely gonna have to throw out your RAM. Speaking of RAM, we did mention this earlier, but you could go with a 6,000 mega transfer kit and save up to $15 there, and maybe even a little bit more if you decided to go no RGB. What? Who even does that? You could even use a super secret mystery PC case that we're gonna be using in our next build for $10 less. And don't worry, remember, it's not gonna ruin your PC building experience. We'll be showing you some of those options in the future, so stick around. Now, this brings us to our second knowledge nugget. If you wanna to throw together a PC like this, but you're scared about missing out on a different build or people will criticize your choices, I want you to lean in really close here. And I need you to hear this, guys. If this is the kind of build, if this kind of build makes you happy, that's all that matters. If you saw one of your favorite games represented or maybe your next favorite game on the list that we tested and this build sounds exciting to you, the only person that needs to be happy with your PC is you. Again, what we showed you today is a balanced build. So if there's a case or cooler that you like better, a GPU or CPU that's more your speed, you do you. We can't have you having an ugly baby on your desktop. We want you to be happy with your build. What made this build special to us is that we were able to balance modern parts with pricing and performance that are awesome and it looks really good too. But again, this is gonna be a choice that's gonna be up to you and we're gonna give you lots of options over the next months or maybe even years for you to basically choose a build that's gonna be right for you. So guys, in the end, don't let anybody tell you differently. Yes, we could obviously do things in lots of ways to end up saving money, making money, all that sort of stuff if we wanted to. But this is a build that you feel is right for you and you're happy, that's all that matters. And there you have it, the Robitech ready to ship pre-built, except this is kind of a one of one while this one here is spoken for. If you like this, but you're not ready to take the plunge into the world of PC building, you know what? Pop on over to robytech.com, click on that email link, shoot me an email, and we'll see if we can work something out. We'd love to build you a PC if, if you're not ready to do it. But if you are ready to take the plunge, we've got you covered with that in-depth, step-by-step video for you. We have the parts list in the description where you can just follow along, and then basically the video is there, zoomed in, and all that sort of stuff. Now, 
We'd love to know if you do build it and if you followed along with that video, what can we do to make it absolutely better? Also, same thing with these videos. We're going through all the parts, showing you the performance, all that stuff, but if there's something we're not covering, please let us know down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this. Now, one thing I do wanna let you guys know, if this configuration that we're doing right now doesn't quite match what you're looking for, don't worry, we have way more in store. We even have some fun ideas and challenges for this series that you are not gonna to wanna to miss. And we're gonna be building those systems live over at youtube.com slash robytech live or twitch.tv slash robytech if you wanna basically follow along and potentially win these. And then we're gonna have these breakdowns right here on Robitech that'll basically give you the overview as well as the performance, etc. Not to say that we don't benchmark it on the Robitech live show as well. So why don't you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post videos like this right here on Robitech. And also, if you want to continue the conversation or you just want some additional help, head on over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech. Amazing place to talk about these very same things. If you want to buy figure out all AMD or you have some thoughts in terms of what you could change, they love to talk about this stuff. And you know what? You might just make a friend. Also, make sure you follow us on all the other socials at Robitech absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.